Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about cleaning up and polishing the engine uh, case covers. So I'm going to start with the uh, clutch cover and as you recall this clutch cover was in really I mean it was really ugly. It was painted black and it was corroded and uh, and here's a view of it. Uh, just to remind you what it looked like. I mean it was pretty bad and when you look at the engine before I started taking it apart uh, you can also see how ugly this cover was. Now since then I have um, cleaned it up with the parts washer and then I uh, scraped it with the or wire brushed it. You know you use a wire brush and get all of the flaky uh, corrosion off of there and uh, you know all the loose corrosion off the surface and then once you've done that um, you spray it with the uh, paint remover and I'll go over all the materials that I use here in a minute but anyway that's what I did here I got all the black off of it and then what you do is uh, you start the wet sanding process and I've already done a portion of this up here because I'm going to show you what it looks like after and then I'm going to show you what it looked like from the factory which is one area right here that is still left from the factory it, it uh, retained its original finish and then uh, show you you know what it looks like now and I'll go through each process on how to do this a lot of people look at these and when they're all corroded and ugly they just think they're wasted so they either paint them or whatever and they don't realize that all of this is on the surface and it can be removed and the aluminum be repolished and everything and it looks beautiful when it's done so just to give you an idea um, what the corrosion is like on this you know as you can see it's pretty bad and I'll zoom in on this a little bit so you can see the corrosion is pretty bad it's got uh, scratch marks on it from where I uh, wire brushed it again you don't have to worry about those scratches and then see all of this you know it's all nice and smooth now but it's still corroded and all that needs to be sanded down now this area right here is the original finish from the factory and again I don't know if you can really see it very well but it's got a nice satin you know just a really nice satin finish on it you can see there you can see the reflection of my finger in there and that's really what it looked like from the factory now a lot of people over polish these to make them look like chrome and to my eye it doesn't look right the bike simply doesn't look right with the chrome cover these engines are so beautiful from the factory that to me it's a shame to uh, you know chrome these because it takes the the subtle beauty away from the engine but again that's just my opinion and I might be a little more passionate about the way the bike was originally designed than most people so anyway what I've done is um, I've done this half of the engine now I've wet sanded it and I polished it and again you can see the reflection of my finger there and it's just got a beautiful finish on it that's just like it was from the factory so again if you refer to the original video on this engine you'll see how just downright ugly this cover was and you can see how I brought it back I mean it's just a beautiful finish right there so I will Go ahead and do this area right here and I'll show you 
the process that I use to get them to look like this. Now, this also is before I have clear coated it. And you may choose to clear coat it or not. It was clear coated from the factory. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here, but, but you know, the original reason that this corroded originally was because the moisture got behind the clear coat and ate away at the aluminum. And then the clear coat starts flaking and peeling and everything else. But uh, so the good thing about the clear coat is that you retain this beautiful finish unless you leave it outside and, it, and rock chips hit it and then it breaks, you know, through the clear and then moisture can get under there and that's when you start getting corrosion here. So, um, you know, in my opinion, you can either choose to clear coat it or not. If you don't, then you have to maintain it. You have to keep polishing it every once in a while unless the bike is kept inside the whole time. So, but I will go ahead and start uh, the process here. Okay, so here are all the materials I use to polish the aluminum. Uh, as I said, I, I start off cleaning it with the parts washer, then I wire brush it, just like I mentioned before. Then I use the paint stripper and you know there's there's two types of paint stripper okay so i have the can and also the spray can now i don't know why it is but for some reason or another, I get better results with the can, the spray can, the aerosol can. And I don't understand why, because they're essentially the same product made by the same company and so on. This can right here costs, I think it was $19 or $18 or something like that. I think it was 18 or $19, which is expensive. This, this aerosol can was $16. Now, this has 15 ounces, this has one quart. So, you know, there's a lot more stripper in here than there is in here. But I tell you what, this works better than this does. And I don't know why that is, but you spray this on the clear coat or paint or whatever, and it immediately bubbles up. Whereas you can spray this on here or, or brush it on with a paintbrush. And for some reason, it softens the paint, but it doesn't come off like it does with this. So I choose to use the aerosol can. And again, you have to, once you've cleaned that all up and, and uh, gotten all the grit and grime off of there, one of the first things you do is spray it with the paint stripper because there's clear on that from the factory and it's clear paint so this will bubble that clear completely off and then you hose it off or wash it off and uh, then you're down to the bare aluminum again now in this case i had to strip the black off with this wash it off and then i had to do it again just to get the clear off so uh i kind of had to do it double I had double uh, duty on that one so then what I do is I start with and this is all wet sandpaper so I start with either 150 or 80 grit wet sandpaper in this particular case I used 150 now again it depends on how much corrosion there is if there is a lot of corrosion like there was on this one I start with 80 or 150. Sometimes you can start with 400 or 300, 320 or whatever. So after you've done it with that, now that's going to take you the longest to, to wet sand all of this down with the 150 or the 80 because you've got to get all the black 
off the aluminum. You have to get it completely back to silver again with no black spots or black uh, birthmarks in there at all because that's the corrosion and that's what you're trying to get off is the corrosion. You're trying to get it back to a, a perfectly even uh, color, even sil surf uh, silver aluminum color. So you're going to be working a lot with with the uh, with the heavy grit sandpaper. So then once you get all the black off of there, you know the the whole thing is going to be very scratchy and very, you know, you're going to looks like you've ruined the finish, but you really haven't. You've got a whole bunch of scratches on there from the sandpaper. So then what you do is you start building up on the grit then. Then I start with, after that, I start with one, uh, 320 or 400, whichever, doesn't matter. And then you go through the whole thing again. And then, then I jump up to 600 or 800. And each time you go up a step, you're going to be uh, sanding it less and less because the scratches start disappearing. And now you're just getting the scratches uh, cut down rather than trying to get the black off of there. So each time you go up on the sandpaper, it takes less and less time. Then after the 800 or 600, whatever you use, I, I, I would go 600, then 800, and then I go to 1,000, and 1,000 starts getting really smooth. And then after 1,000, I go to 1,500, and by now, you're just almost skimming over it. Uh, but anyway, the 1,500, after that and then after that I go with 2000 which 2000 is almost like just smooth paper but it definitely makes a difference it gets some of those really fine scratches out of there then after that I use this uh, wet dry sanding pad and these things are really cool now this is this is 3000 grit which is really fine and this is the pad here. And that's what I used on that. And I tell you what, you wouldn't believe the difference after you've used the 2000 grit. When you start using this, it's like all the scratches just magically disappear. So uh, this is really great. This pad is really cool. And as you can see, it's, a, it's almost like a styrofoam type of pad. But I tell you what, it works really great. So I'm a firm believer in these things for, for polishing the aluminum. So that's it. And oh, and by the way, each time you're sanding it, you know, it's good to have a spray bottle of water because you're constantly having to feed the water onto the, uh, to the um, sandpaper. So now after you've done that last step with the pad, then I use semi-chrome here. This stuff is worth its weight in gold. Now, any kind of aluminum polish would probably work, but this stuff is, uh, in my opinion, really the greatest stuff out there. I mean, I've been using this since the early 70s when it first came out, and you know, to me, I think this is really the best stuff. It's mostly sold in motorcycle shops only, you can't really find it in auto parts stores, but and they come in a tube normally in the auto part in the um, motorcycle shops. But I ordered this online, and it's a and it's a full on can. Now I bought this probably, uh, probably ten years ago, and as you can see, I've still not used it all. Maybe eight years ago or so, I bought this, but. But anyway, you can buy this in various different sizes uh, online. So then anyway, like I said, I use this to then polish the, uh, the surface after I've done all of the sanding. So it's a lot of sweat equity and people will comment, well, why don't you use a, a buffing wheel or a polishing wheel? Yeah. A polishing wheel takes half the time, a quarter of the time. It's fast, it's easy. Why don't you water vapor the, the corrosion off? Yeah, you can do it in minutes, but I tell you what, the water vapor, in my opinion, adds 
grit. They put they put grit in the water, and to me, it it can. If you don't use the right grid, it can damage the surface of the, uh, of the aluminum. Um, anyway, that's just my opinion. I choose to use the sweat equity because in my opinion, it looks exactly like factory. There is like no deviation whatsoever. So um, that's, this is the way I choose to do it. And I tell you, real men use sweat equity. <laughs> that's just, you know, my opinion, nothing worthwhile comes easy so that's just my choice now if you're going to clear coat it after you've polished it you really need to because of all the wax and everything that you've that you've put on there you have to wash it down with acetone and when I say wash it just just dampen a, a paper towel with acetone and wipe the whole thing down and let it get completely dry and then maybe even rinse it with water and then dry it or whatever so you know that you got all of the acetone off of there and then uh, you can go ahead and clear coat it at that point and I do not sand the uh, I do not sand it down before I put this clear on I just clear right over the the polished portion um, you could use an adhesive promoter and sometimes I do that with when I just clear over the polished portion because um, that that would help the uh, the clear uh, adhere to it because you're not sanding it um, the other thing is that I use engine paint clear to put on there because then it's heat resistive you know it's good for up to 500 degrees which these things don't get anywhere near that uh, I would not go with a thousand degree engine paint because that's got copper in it and you'll have a copper uh, tint to it if you use that so I just stay with the normal engine paint that is at 500 degrees or less so um, again those things don't get anywhere near 500 degrees if they do the engines in trouble anyway so uh, that's, these are the materials I use, and now I'll go ahead and do a demonstration on how to get it to that point. Okay, so uh, like I said, I start with 150. I just kind of shoot this a little bit with water. By the way, I almost forgot, you got to wear gloves because this wet dry sandpaper is brutal on your fingernails and, and all of that. Your fingernails will be black for days if you don't you wear gloves because all this black that you see forming is all, you know, sanded aluminum and, and then when you go to polish it, you'll have black from the polish. And again, it'll take you all week to get it out of your fingers. So I suggest you use gloves.
Now I just did that in real time and you can see already immediately how much better it looks. I mean look at that how much better it looks immediately it just in a couple minutes time. Now all these black dots right here and so on that's what you need to really work out of there because they will always be there if you don't get them out now. You'll polish this you know like this over here and yet you'll see those black marks there if you don't get them out now. And you don't have to worry about wearing the aluminum down or anything like that because the aluminum is much tougher than this sandpaper is. You're really just getting the surface uh, material off of there. Now for the sake of the video, I'm, I'm just going to kind of skip over these dots here for, you know, for now because that can take a while to work those out of there. So for the sake of the video, I'm just going to focus on this part up here so that we can advance to the other uh, sandpaper. And it's good to just kind of do it in one direction so that, you know, you don't have all kinds of swirls and everything else. You just want to kind of do it evenly. So now I'm going to go from 150 to the 320. So you can see the uh, you can see the scratches are starting to get finer and finer as I go. So now I'm going to go to the eight hundred.
and you want to be pressing pretty hard while you're doing this so like I said it's a it's really a workout So then the, uh, the scratches start getting finer and finer as you go. So now I'm going to go with the 1000. So you can see now it's it, it almost starts polishing it even with the sandpaper and as you can see the scratches start getting finer and finer. So now I'm going to move to the 1500. And now the 2000. So now the scratches are very, very fine, and you're almost polishing it, even with that, you know, when you get to the 2000, it's almost, it almost has that polished look. But now we're going to use the sanding pad. which is 3,000. And, you've, and it may feel like it's not doing anything, but because of the fact that the water is turning black, that tells you that it's definitely doing something. Now I'll spend a little bit more time with this one because 
you know, it's almost like the final step before you polish it. Now, as you can see, it virtually has no more scratches in it at all. The scratches that are there almost look like the machine look that the original cover had from the factory. So now I start with the uh, semi-chrome. And I always use paper towel with that because even paper towel has a little bit of abrasion to it. And I just kind of dab a fairly liberal amount. And I'll rub it with this polish until the polish is virtually gone. meaning as you rub it it kind of dissipates and starts shining and again this step is really important because a lot of people will just put it on a polishing wheel which takes seconds but then again you're getting it way too shiny it doesn't look factory then the factory had a very satin you know soft finish to it but if you put it on a, a polishing wheel, it, it does it too quickly and it, and it goes beyond that, that satin look. It looks, starts looking more like chrome then. So I do it all by hand. And as you rub it, it starts almost drying up. And as you rub it, it almost starts drying up on you. And that's when it, that's when you know that you've gone through the polish enough to where it, it starts looking really good. So then I take a microfiber cloth. Okay, for some reason there must have been an abrasion in that paper towel and I've got some scratches there that I've got to get out real quick. In that case, I just used the 3000 again pad.
and then polish it over again. Now you can see that when it gets that black, then you know that you're, you're ready to wipe it dry with the uh, microfiber. So there you go. I mean, again, I haven't spent, you know, a whole lot of time with that, but you can see where it's heading. That's gonna be a, a beautiful clutch cover. So again, it takes a while, but it's well worth the time spent, as you can see there. Now, when I get all of these other areas here polished up this will be a beautiful cover now from Honda these things came the whole bottom portion of this cover here was not polished from Honda because this part here is at the bottom of the engine and you can't see it so believe it or not even Honda sometimes you know cuts corners and <laughs> so when the when the cover is on the engine let's see it's actually on the engine kind of like this okay so this side over here is up against the engine over here the the cylinders go up right here so they didn't bother to polish this portion of it. So, you know, if you want to keep it exactly like factory, you just don't polish that. But sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So I usually try to do it the same way that, that uh, Honda did it. Now on the bottom, this is the bottom right here. Again, it's on the engine like this. So that's the bottom, which you can't see when you're looking at the bike so they didn't polish that either so this whole bottom section and this side were not polished from the factory so you can either do it or not but like i said you can see the results here with a little set sweat equity and a little muscle and a little bit of time you can make it look exactly like factory and not like some custom chrome job. So uh, I wanted to go over quickly about uh, getting the engine prepared for these covers. And one of the things, just like when you put the, put the head and the cylinders and all that stuff on, one of the things you have to really make sure you do is clean up the uh, mating edge 
where the gasket goes. You want to have that perfectly clean of any of the old gaskets uh, or glue or whatever. So it's really important because the, the cleaner you get that surface, the better seal you'll have and less uh, leaks or whatever. You won't have any leaks if you clean this area up really well. So my next video is going to go over refinishing the valve cover. Now on a 79 and 80 CBX, the valve covers were painted from the factory. They're painted the same color as the engine, so they look identical to the engine color. And as you can see, this, this valve cover is very corroded. Now I've cleaned it up, but again, it's very corroded and really needs to be stripped down completely and then wire brushed and uh, gotten prepared for another paint job. And you really got to get all that corrosion off of there because if you don't, it'll show up through the paint and it won't have a nice smooth finish like it was from the factory. So uh, just to give you an example again of what this should look like from the factory. That's what it should look like from the factory. A nice smooth finish on there with no corrosion showing through or anything. And again, you can see that it looks totally the same color as the engine itself. Now on the 81 and 82 bikes, that valve cover is polished, just like the clutch cover. So it's got a, you know, a polished look to it. But on the 79 and 80, they were painted. So uh, if you're doing a bike that's an 81, 82, then unfortunately, you're going to have to polish that, that valve cover. And boy, I tell you, there is nothing more tedious than polishing one of those valve covers. So... Uh, that's something that I don't look forward to if I ever had to do it. And actually, this is an example of what I'm talking about. This is the valve cover on my 900F, which it will have to be polished. So when I say I don't look forward to it, I have done it on 1100Fs and 900Fs, which are also polished. And it's just the most grueling job. But you know, you take your time, you do it right, and the result is beautiful when it's done. So that's going to do it for this video. Um, on the next couple of videos now, um, this engine is going to be complete, and that's going to be pretty exciting because then we'll be, be ready to install it onto this frame onto the original frame for the engine and that's going to be a really interesting uh, segment because the engine I leave it here on the lift and what I'll do is I turn the engine so that it's facing the front wheel here and then I get it up on two jack stands. And again, I've explained this before, but you put a jack stand under the engine here on this side of the crank and one over on the other side, and it balances the engine perfectly. And so then you take the frame and you lower it down onto the engine, and then uh, you lower the frame down with the front forks on it, and then that way, you know, you put the center stand, attach the engine, and you have your front forks, and then it's sitting up there by itself then, and then you can start building the bike from there. So once I get the valve cover and the clutch cover on there, uh, then I'll be ready to, to do that. So the next video will cover the, uh, the valve cover and the installation 
of the clutch cover and the valve cover. And then the video after that, I'll be mounting the engine to the frame. And by the way, at that same time, uh, I'll be doing, I'll be rebuilding the front forks also. So those are a couple of videos that are coming up here in the next week or two that are gonna be pretty exciting. So uh, anyway, stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching and Please remember to subscribe and then hit the, uh, the bell if you want to get post notifications each time I post a new video. And to, you, to those of you who have not subscribed, please subscribe because I've got a whole lot of videos coming. I'm going to be restoring this 404. I'm going to be uh, cleaning up and getting running that 900F right there, which is 5,000 mile, original, original 5,000 mile bike. Then I'm going to start on the 1100F restoration, as well as I've got another CBX that I'm going to be building at the same time. So once we get this engine caught up to the second CBX, we'll be putting two of them together at the same time. So. Stay tuned for that. And again, thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.